Good morning, everybody. Um, I had a video recommendation from Jersey Reptile Kings on Instagram. So uh, I thought this would be a very appropriate time to discuss the whole breeding process uh, for reticulated pythons. Um, first off, let's discuss the, the basics. You got uh, a female, which you want to be about three years, four years old, ideally. They can breed at three. You're going to have a low egg count depending on the size and everything, but the size is more important. Uh, so you're going to have to be at least 10 feet. You want them at least 10 feet long. Now, this is Cetera, and she is a Sunfire Motley. She is two years old, and as you can see, she got some pretty good length on her. Um, super, super snake. I uh, just wanted to take her out and give you a, kind of a closer look at it. Again, Sunfire Motley. And uh, she was purchased from Retic Obsession out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And she's been with me ever since she's a hatchling. Now, getting back to size requirements. Depending on your interest in breeding, not unlike me, I, I did my first uh, first attempt at breeding last year with Lucina, who is a about a 16 foot lavender golden child. Uh, she was three and a half years old. She did very good for me. Uh, actually, a lot better than I expected. I wound up with 25 eggs with one slug. Uh, and that slug didn't really appear to be a slug at first, but uh, it never did develop. So... Um, that was a really good initial uh, breeding for me. So it went very well. Again, she had her size, she had her age. Um, again, with the females, you want them 10 feet plus. You want them uh, at least three, three and a half years old. Uh, a lot of people will go ahead and wait till they're four years old. That'll give you a little bit better uh, opportunity. Uh, now, as far as the males, this is where things get a little tricky. Uh, you want the males at least 16 months. There are people that have bred males as, as young as a year old. Uh, your success rate is going to be a little bit different. Now, where most people make the mistake in purchasing retics and they say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and breed this pair. I'm going to get me a male and a female. Uh, little do they know that if they buy those, the male and the female together as a hatchling or whatever, and grow them up, it's quite possible that that male, if not slow fed properly, is gonna to be too big for your female when it comes time for her to breed. So the best way to do that, if you set yourself up to breed a female at three and a half to four years old, you wanna wait two years to purchase a male. So go ahead and get your male that you're, or your female that you're interested in breeding Go ahead and get her up two years old and then decide what male that you want to use for her. That's going to put that male at 16 months to two years old when you go ahead for the breeding process with your female being four years old. That'll give you the ideal conditions uh, for a successful, and that again depends on the female and how well she's going to breed, her follicle count and everything like that. But for the most part, you have a much better success rate if you buy a female, get her to two years old, decide what male you want to purchase or what breeding combination you want to do, and then get your male. And at that time, when the female's two years old, you can go ahead and, and attempt your breeding. Now, the that covers your size and your age recommendations. Now, let's talk about the other aspect of it. Let's talk about introducing your male. The reason I said this was a very good video for this time is next month, uh, usually October is when I start uh, introducing my males to my females. So let's talk about that for a minute. You have a female, uh, you know she's ready, you know she's of size, you know she's of age, you've got the male. Uh, 
One thing we didn't cover about the males, you're going to want them about uh, between seven, eight, nine feet, somewhere around there. Um, that will give you the ideal. I was told between six and eight, and I agree with that. I think they're going to do very well. There again, it decide, uh, depends on the size of your female as well. So uh, getting back to the introduction. Introducing the males is super easy. Uh, you do want to make sure that you monitor this very closely, but basically all it is, you got a female on this end. I would recommend opening this end. Go ahead and slide your male in there and monitor what goes on in the process. All right, there are some instances where the female will become combative. She's not ready. Uh, she's not interested and she may get very combative. At that point, you're gonna to wanna to be able to take that male out as soon as possible to avoid any kind of injury to that male or the female. Uh, and that's not really a closed door scenario. She just may not be ready at that time. However, if things go well, she's not combative, she allows that male to be introduced into her enclosure. And what I typically do is I leave the male in there for three days. Uh, I observe frequently to make sure that you uh, possibly see a lock where the tails interlock and the reproduction has begun. Uh, after three days, I like to take the male out, give him five days to recover, give him some water, give him some food, let him re recoup his energy. After five days, go ahead and reintroduce him for three more days. I did this last season until there were no more interest with the female. You will be able to tell once you put that male in there, if she's interested, that little tail is going to go up and she's going to start swinging that tail around towards the male and give him, hey, you know, let's, let's go ahead and do this. If only our females, human females, were like that. That would be awesome. All right. Once the three-day uh, introduction is complete, again, Take them out for five days, let them recoup, give them some water, give them some food. And I usually, uh, last year I did this all the way until mid-November. And I did happen to observe three locks during that process. And at that time, um, as far as the female is concerned, a lot of times you'll know that she is ready if she comes off of food. If she starts uh, denying food or uh, not accepting food, she's probably ready to breed so you can start introducing your male at that time. Um, once the interest is gone, uh, after that, I believe it is about 30 days, I have to check my notes, but you will notice an ovulation where her, uh, towards the midsection to the end of her tail is going to be swollen up a lot. So that's going to let you know that uh, things are in place. There are a lot of factors and what we look for to know that it has taken. Perhaps another video might be good for that. Um, I would have to sit down and get all my notes straightened out and make sure I cover everything. I don't want to give you just a vague uh, description of what goes on, so I want to be in detail with that. But basically, this is leading up to and what we do for breeding season. After there is no more interest in the male, I take him out. That's pretty much done for the year. She's going to go off food. And you're going to see the ovulation part, and you're going to notice other things. You can do a follicle test on her. But um, that's pretty much it on the breeding. Uh, as far as the time frame, again, I want to make sure I have notes for this because there is a lot of, uh, lot of things to look at. I started... Uh, in October, introducing the male all the way up to mid-November. Uh, she laid her eggs in February, the very first part of February. And then you have your 85 to 90 day incubation period where you're going to want a very good incubator. I do have a video on uh, how to build an incubator out of an igloo cooler. I suggest you check that out because that did work phenomenally for me. I had no problems whatsoever. It seemed every single egg except for one, which could possibly have been infertile to begin with, actually produced a snake. And they all come out very healthy and ready to uh, feed on your fingers. All right. Um, 
the time frames for the whole pregnancy and everything we'll cover on a different video, but that gives you an idea if you're wanting to breed retics. Here's a mistake that a lot of people uh, tend to do, myself included. I'm not going to lie. Uh, once I started getting into retics, boom, here's one fear. And just, I started collecting big time. Next thing I know, I've got 40 retics in my basement. Uh, last year, I only did the breeding with Lucina. And all of a sudden, I'm now with 25, 24 hatchlings. It can get overwhelming very, very quickly. Retics is an addiction. You, you get one and then next month you see a coloration and you think, man, that's phenomenal. That color morph, I've got to have it. So you pick up another one. Start out small, guys. Keep it small. Keep it to where it's manageable. I am pretty much, this is a full-time job on top of my regular full-time job. So it does get a little overwhelming. I'm not saying it is impossible, but this is what I chose. I enjoy doing it. I love taking care of all these animals, uh, but it's a lot of work. There's a lot of work to this, especially when you get into your breeding. A lot of stress when you're talking about placing eggs in an incubator and, and not knowing if that incubator is staying on and you're worrying about temperatures, you're worrying about humidity, you're worried about, okay, what's my hatch date? What's my there's just so much stress involved with it. So be sure you're prepared for that. I want to get her out again because she is a super good snake. Um, that will pretty much cover what the, uh, the whole process leading up to breeding. Uh, hopefully that covers and answers a lot of your questions. Uh, Jersey Reptile King, I appreciate the suggestion. Like I say, that was a suggestion on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, it's under Mostly Snakes. And uh, pretty much just putting pictures of nothing but my snakes on there. So uh, might be something you want to check out. I hope that uh, answers a bunch of questions for you. We will get in detail with the time frames and everything, perhaps on another video. There is a lot involved in that. So I want to make sure that all my I's are dots and my T's are crossed. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be glad to help you out and answer them for you. And uh, we may go over on a future video my plans for breeding this year. You know what? I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, I do have a uh, orange glow tiger female that I'm going to be breeding with an orange glow male. And that will produce endo caramels. And I'm also going to be doing a genetic stripe line. I uh, got a female genetic stripe and she will be bred with a platinum genetic stripe. For those of you that don't know, his name is Prometheus and uh, beautiful. I love the platinum genetic stripe line. Um, so I'm really looking forward to possibly getting some of those in. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking about giving Lucina the year off this year. Uh, I was going to breed her with a Phantom Motley Tiger, uh, actually the one that was loose not too long ago. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and give her this year off. Like I say, it does get overwhelming. And we're gonna talk about that on a video coming up very soon, what to expect after your eggs have hatched. I was very strongly deceived on that whole process. It's been a very good learning process for me. So I am going to hopefully pass on that knowledge to you guys. Um, it is very frustrating. It can be, maybe not. I've got a friend of mine that he, uh, he did a clutch of hypogranite Burmese this year and he has had no problems whatsoever which irritates me. <laughs> it doesn't. I'm very glad that he got a good clutch, and uh, but he is not having near the problems that I'm having as far as getting hatchlings to eat. So that is one of the things we're going to talk about in another video. I hope this helped out. Uh, Jersey Reptile Kings, thanks for the recommendation, and I hope that helped you out a little bit. It was very vague, kind of covered it a little fast, but uh, maybe it helped. 
We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.